everybody. Welcome. My name is Bernice. Thank you for joining Bake Recipes and Bible. What are we going to do? We're going to bake, we're going to do some recipes, and we're going to talk about the Bible, the amazing word of God, right? The Bible. Who doesn't love the Bible? I do. So I want you to get your stuff ready. Go in your kitchen if you need to, if you want to make today what we are going to be making. So Bake Recipes and Bible is basically a place to fellowship together about the Word of God. We're going to eat the Word of God, and we are also going to make some food. We are going to be baking. We're going to be making some recipes. So we're going to eat the Word of God, and we're going to eat spiritual food and physical food together. So that's what Bake Recipes and Bible is all about. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope that you will be blessed by this um, weekly time together, that we will commune together and cook. Who doesn't love food? Who doesn't like some breakfast? Who doesn't like some cookies and creams, right? Who doesn't like some dinner and lunch? We're going to make it together. And the best part, we're going to talk about the Word of God, all right? So tune in to Bake Recipes and Bible with Bernice. Hi everybody, good day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Bernice. I am back with Bake Recipes and Bible. So, hi. Last time we, we talked, last time we were together, I did some um, recipes on oatmeal and also one with salad and my favorite healthy burger. So now today we're going to be making cornbread. Yes, we're gonna be making some cornbread with Jeffy cornbread. So I cannot wait for you to taste this cornbread. It is amazing, but I'm gonna add some ingredients to it. As you know, with our um, time together, we do look at spiritual food. We do look at physical food as well. So I want you to go get your ingredients. And that is gonna be your Jeffy corn bread mix, okay? You wanna go also get you a glass of milk, okay? So you can pour some milk. It doesn't have to be any type of milk as long as it's milk, okay? It came from a cow. <laughs> and then um, I want you to get some oatmeal, okay? Some oatmeal, I'm gonna tell you why. Because we're gonna be making cornbread, but I do put something special inside of it. Yes, I do. And that is one of the secrets I'm gonna share with you today. Uh, and then get you a stick of butter, okay? And of course, you wanna get your pan that you're gonna make your, put it in to put it in an oven. All right, so welcome to Bake Recipes and Bible with Bernice. Um, so let's get going. All right, so we've gotten our ingredients ready. So praise the Lord for that, right? Now, I want you all to get your Bibles out. Of course, it's not bake recipes and Bible without the Bible, right? Without the Bible part. So, I want you to get your Bibles out because we're going to be doing the Word of God. We're going to be studying about us, 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23, okay? About being a servant, a, being a servant, serving all men. That's what it's going to be about today. So, before we go and do that, I wanted us to literally prep to be putting some food together. But I wanted you to just prep your food, meaning that I want you to coat your pan with some batter. If you don't have butter, you can use oil if you want. But I want you to coat your pan, okay? And if your butter is already hard like mine, I want you to leave it out so that it melts because we need to cook this food, okay? So what do you do first you get your milk why i want us to get the stuff ready before we do the bible study is because um i want us to put put the food in the oven while it's cooking and then we are talking about you know the, the bible so get your milk right it don't have to be a lot just get some you know some of it and then I want you to get your Jiffy, okay? Jiffy corn muffin mix. 
Okay, you can get this from anywhere. You can get it from, um, you know, the store. You can get it from uh, Walmart, Target, you know, wherever you get food, you can get this from there. All right. Ooh. So open it, right? And I want you to just pour it inside your your um, your milk, okay? I want you to pour it inside your milk. All right, so you wanna pour it in here. You wanna have a good mixture, a good ratio, okay? Let's mix it, okay? This is what it looks like. You're mixing it. It's not really that thick, but I'm gonna add some oatmeal to it, okay? So I'm gonna add some oatmeal. Why do I add some oatmeal? Because I like things to be a little different, okay? That's why I add some oatmeal. So, so there's your oatmeal. It gives it a little bit of healthiness, you know? I'm, I'm all about health for me personally. So it gives it some healthiness, okay? So when you mix it, it's like if you if you ever had um, uh, Cyrillac for babies, it looks exactly like Cyrillac, okay? And then after that, what you do is, of course, I wanna coat this well. I wanna coat it well. So I coated it, and I'm gonna use the, the knife to cut, okay, my, 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 um, my butter into little pieces because I want the butter to melt into the, um, the cornbread while I'm making it. Uh, the reason is because I want it to cook. Some people add um, oil while it's cooking or in, inside before it cooks. For me, I personally just like to put the corn, the, uh, the butter in there, uh, just scatter it around, okay? That's just me. I like to just scatter it around and have it like displayed. I'll show you how I, I do it, guys. I'll show you how I do it, and it's so much better than doing it a certain way that you feel like it's best. However, whatever rock your boat, you can oil if you want, whatever you, you feel best for you, okay? All right, so I showed you what it looks like, right, when I put the butters in there. So now I'm going to pour my um my my cornbread in here okay i'm gonna pour my cornbread in here yum yum What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna get a little bit of milk to put in there and then just um, pour it on there, okay? Okay, so I got the cornbread, cornbread mix going. It's all done. It's in the oven. I would say put it at 3, 320 um, for the, the heat, just 320. Okay, because you're, you're just baking. You're not really making like, a, you know, chicken or turkey or um, beef or steak. So just 320. I don't know if you can hear it, um, but it's, it's in the oven. Okay. All right. So this is our spiritual food. Okay. We already prepped our physical food, which is cornbread. Okay. And it's in the oven. So we're going to do our spiritual food today all right so sorry for the noise in the background okay but it helps <laughs> what are we going to study today we're going to study about how to be a servant to everybody right we've put our cornbread in the oven okay and it's baking praise the lord it's baking at 320 uh so right now we're going to be studying about how to be a servant to everybody how to win souls for the kingdom of god so this is our spiritual food okay so welcome to recipes bacon bible if you've never been part of this before welcome my name is Bernice. okay all right so here it is um 
and I'm reading from 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23, okay? So I'm going to read the whole thing and then I'm going to go each line. So it says this, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself servant to all. So I'm reading from the New King, uh, New, New, New King James Version. Uh, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win G Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak I have become all things to all men, that I might be, I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the, the, the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. Okay, so let's go line by line. It says first, 19 for though i am free from all men i have made myself a servant to all that i might win the more what does that mean it means that though that we are all free meaning that paul was saying though he's free though he is you know no longer a slave in sin no longer bound to sin no longer you know uh without christ that even though he's free he knows within himself that he has to be a servant to everyone so that he can win people because jesus said that he did not come to to be served but he he came to serve right and the bible also says that you know the greatest of you is what is the servant the greatest of anybody is the servant the the, the last to become the first and the first to become the last right and so we have to remember that we are servants of god even when paul wrote about you know romans and 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 corinthians and all of that whenever he, he he wrote his letters he always referred to him himself as a what as a servant as a servant of god and that's what we have to remember that we are not you know our titles we're not an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher but first we are daughters or if you're a guy a son and then we are servants of god right the posture, the heart posture that God is after is to see you as a servant in his house, as a servant. When you go and preach, you're a servant. When you go and minister prophetically, you're a servant. When you go and, you know, be an apostle, a pioneer, you're a servant. Even as a a wife, you're a servant, right? Wherever you are, you're, you're a servant, right? And so that's the mentality that Paul had. And so it says that, and to the Jews, I became as a Jew, that, I'm, that I might win Jews to those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. So Paul was like, say, you know what? The Christians, I'm acting like Christians around them, right? He's like, I'm acting as a Christian around Christians so I can win Christians because you know, even though we are all Christians, there are some Christians that are really like watching you, like, are you really behaving like Christian, right? And even he said that even to the Gentiles, right? He says to, to those who are who are um, without law, I'll, I'll come back to that. So he said what? He, as a Jew, you know, when he's around Jews, he's acting like a Jew, right? Jews with law, he's acting like it. He's obeying the word of God. He's behaving like a Christian. He's behaving like who God called him to be, right? To win souls, right? Just because we are Christians doesn't mean that we can still behave like Christians around Christians because, they, you know, there's level in Christianity. There are people who are Christians, but they don't really have like a deep connection with God. They don't know how to fast. They don't know how to really study the word of God. So they are like people who are on another level, right? And so they are lukewarm Christians, but they are still Christians. They're still born again. They're still children of God, right? And then there are those that are really like being Christians for years. They pray in tongues. They know how to study the word of God. And so when you are like Paul in this position and you're around all the Jews, what you do is that you still be under the law, right? The law, which is the word of God, right? So that you can win 
Christians deeper into the Word of God. There might be Christians that are listening to, you know, secular music. But we all know secular music is not good for you, right? It's not good for your ear gates. Or they might be watching certain shows. We all know that certain shows are not good for your, ear, your eye gates, right? They don't know that. And so you being a Christian that is very, you know, uh, very open to what God is doing and very un, um, in tune with the Holy Spirit, you'll be like, you know what? I know you want to listen to that. I know you want to watch that. But... This is what the Lord says about it. Or they might be, you know, drinking wine and drinking alcohol every day. But guess what? The Bible says that do not be drunk with wine for it leads to debauchery, right? So, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what it says. So you who know the word of God and live by the word of God, you can tell them, hey, this is what the word of God says. Oh, I didn't even know that, right? So we can be each other's iron right it says iron sharpens iron right so let's continue it says to those who are without law which are basically uh non-christians as without law this is the part I, I love he says that i'm not only trying to win souls you know deeper into the word of god i'm not trying to just draw people closer who are already saved into you know the word of god but i want to also win non-believers right but this is what he says that i love it says, to those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward God, right? But under law toward Christ. So this is what he, he says, that I might win those who are without law. So what does he say? He says that, yeah, I want to win them. I want to I wanna be, you know, I want to be their friend. I want to get to know them who are without law. But as I get to know them, I want them to know that I am with I, I am with the law because he says what? Not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ. He's saying that, yes, I'm going to go and win souls for the kingdom of God, but I'm not going to pretend that I'm not a Christian. I'm not going to do what they're doing because many people, you know, many people want to win souls to the kingdom of God, but they want to act like the world. Oh, they're going to the, you know, to the club. I need to go to the club and so I can win so souls. And then you dress like a harlot to go to the club with those that are already lost. What does that happen? What does that why do you do that? What does that accomplish? Because the Bible says that we're not to be of the world. We can be in the world, but we cannot be of the world, right? And so when you go in there and you go to the world to try to win souls, remember. To still have your Christ-like mentality, your Christ-like demeanor, because that's what is going to win the souls, right? That's what's going to draw them to you, because they're going to be like, oh, there's something different about you. I don't know, but whenever I'm around you, there's something different about you, and I like that, right? So, as Christians, when we go and try to win souls for the kingdom of God, we have to remember that we have to still behave as Christians, right? We can't smoke like they smoke. We can't curse like they curse. We can't, you know, gossip like they gossip. Because we are trying to win. We're trying to win souls, right? We're trying to show them the pathway that is better than what they're already currently under. And so that is what Paul is saying is that, yeah, he's going to try and draw, you know, win non-believers on people who are not under law. But... He's not going to behave as though he's not under law. He says here, yeah, not being without law toward Christ, but under law toward Christ. Uh, not, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ. Right? So he said, I'm not going to go and pretend I'm not a Christian. I'm not going to go and pretend I don't know Christ. I'm going to go and still behave like a Christian. So when you go and win souls to, you know, to the kingdom of God, and, and God sends you to, to win souls who are non-Christians. You have to remember to still stick to your biblical principles, right? You have to stick to your biblical principles because if you're not careful, you will be drawn out of your pathway into the world's pathway. 22, to the weak, I became as weak that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men that I might I might by all means save some. I love that he says that to the weak, 
he has also what behave to the weak that uh he says to the weak i became as weak you know he he, he bared the burden of the weak because the Bible says that we are to bear one another's burdens right so to the weak the person who's weak he allowed them to to see his weak his weakness as well right because the bible says that in our weakness god is strong so how are you going to minister to somebody who's weak by letting them know that hey i understand i have been there before but guess what you know who helped me when i was there god jesus the holy spirit right he was being able to share his sorrows share the things that he's been through and that's the thing that's lacking in evangelism is that people want to go and say oh you need to repent you need to repent and know jesus but sometimes people will want to hear you when you are actually sharing your experiences sharing your struggles you know if somebody is having struggles with addiction and maybe you had an addiction it's okay to say hey you had an addiction and god helped you out of it and they'll be like, whoa, how did you get out? And that really intrigued them because you're answering a question that they've been trying to search everywhere for an answer. I mean, imagine the, the woman who, who was basically um, with the blood, with the issue of blood for 12 years, right? I think 18 years or 12 years, I don't remember. I don't want to misquote. But, he, but she had a lot of blood going on. She was bleeding a lot. She went to physician after physician. Nobody could help her. So she came and she met Jesus and she touched the hem of God, of Jesus' garment, and she got healed. Imagine her being healed and seeing another woman who's having issues, blood issues, bleeding, and she's trying to evangelize to that woman about Jesus. You think the best thing for her to do is to say, hey, I was just like you. I was bleeding and Jesus saved me. But now in this day and age, people want to just not want to talk about that. Some people are not ready to share that part of their life. And that's okay. You will get there. God will let you get there. But the best way to relate to somebody's weakness is to show them your weakness. Maybe you might not show them that specific weakness. But maybe there's another type of weakness that you had that Jesus helped you. So when you're able to be transparent and, and relatable and able to, to share your deepness with people, they're open to hear you because they want to know the Jesus that saved you. Because if you maybe got some demons and, you know, I think everybody has had demons. Myself, I have. God has delivered me from that. So if, you know, you had some demonic, you know, warfare, whatever, and God delivered you, you can let somebody know. God delivered me from that. No longer bound, bound to that than Jesus, right? And that could show you that you are literally letting somebody know your weakness somebody who's weak know your weakness right and he said that what i have become all things to all men that i might by all means save some and that is important because we have to remember that whenever we go out there to evangelize to people or to minister to people we have to ask god god what do you want me to be how do you want me to interact you know how, how do you want me to help this person because we can be you know something to somebody Somebody might need a smile that day, a hug, or an encouragement, you know, or some money, okay? You ask God, how can I be of help to this person, right? He said he's become what? He has become all things. And how do you become all things? Through Christ, right? Because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, right? So you can be all things through Jesus Christ, right? And so he said that what? So he can win some, so he can save some. Not everybody is your assignment. You have to remember that. Not everybody is your assignment. I want you to say that. Not everybody is my assignment. God has an assignment for you, okay, and for somebody else. Sometimes your assignment is to just to plant the seed of, of Christ, and somebody will come and water it, and somebody will come and help the person be led to, to salvation. So you have to ask God, what is my part in this? 23. Now... This I do for the gospel's sake, that I might, that I may be partaker of it with you. So he says what? He does all this. He, he basically become all things so that he can partake the gospel with everybody, right? So that's what we learned today is that my question for you is, how are you being all things to all men? Are you intentionally going there out in the world? asking God, 
how can I be something to somebody that is, you know, stressing out or being, you know, whatever issue they're having? How can I be of help, right, toward that person? How can I evangelize to this person? How can I show them my weakness? How can I still be a Christian and still talk to non-believers and not be sucked into their world, but let them come into my world as a Christian? How can you still be a Christian around other Christians? How can you help them grow, right? So those are some questions that we can really ask ourselves as we go out there and evangelize to save people and bring people to the kingdom of God. Um, it's not done yet, the cornbread. So I'm gonna let it cook a little bit more, bake a little bit more. And then at the end, I'm gonna just put a picture on here. So it was so lovely talking to you all about 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23, and also making cornbread with you guys. Remember that the cornbread has to be in there for I think 20 minutes. But until it's brown, you know, sometimes I use a fork to literally like poke at it so that some some air can go in there and that he can actually really saturate it and make it taste good. So it was lovely baking with you guys today. Thank you for tuning into um, Bake Recipes and Bible with Grinnies. I hope you were blessed. Have a blessed day and talk to you all soon. I hope you enjoy your cornbread. I'm going to put a picture of the cornbread so that you can look at it and see it. Love you all. Bye.